Lesson 26, I will compare fractions greater than 1 by reasoning using benchmark fractions. So remember when we say we're talking about a fraction that's greater than 1, we're talking that a fraction is that's either a mixed number or is an improper fraction. So I want you to think about this for just a second. When you hear me refer to a fraction greater than 1, I mean a mixed number like 1 and 1 fourth. It's greater than 1 because it has a whole fourth greater than 1, or I'm talking about 2 and two-thirds is a fraction greater than one, or any improper fraction where the numerator is greater than the denominator. So this will be a fraction greater than one, and we're going to compare them, which means we're going to say which one's greater and which one's less than, and we're going to use benchmarks, benchmark fractions. And remember, a benchmark fraction is when you're using a fraction that you know to compare a fraction that you're not really that familiar with. Like benchmark fractions will be like whole numbers, like we, it's pretty easy to find one and two and half, one and a half. These are benchmark fractions. So we're going to take these numbers that are greater than one, or these improper fractions, and we're going to compare them to whole numbers and halves so that we can, so that we can compare the fractions. Okay, today we're not going to use our math journals. We're going to go right straight to the problem set. So I want you to go ahead and write your name on your problem set. And let's take a look at this number line. We're going to plot the following points on the number line without measuring. So you'll notice these are all fractions that are greater than 1. And you can see we have a mixed number, a mixed number. And here we have an improper fraction that has a numerator greater than the denominator. And these are our benchmarks fractions here. We have our whole numbers 2, 3, and 4. So first of all, I've got 2 and 7 eighths. Well, I know 2 and 7 eighths is going to become between 2 and 3. So now I have to think to myself, is 2 and 7 eighths closer to 2 or is it closer to 3? Well, I know 2 and 8 eighths is 3. So 2 and 7 eighths is just 1 eighth away from being 3. So 2 and 7 eighths is going to be really close to being 3 holes. So now let's think about 3 and 3 6. Well, I know it's going to come between 3 and 4 because it's greater than 3, but it's less than 4. And it's 1 6, so that means it's just going to be 1 6 greater than 3. Now, 1 6 is going to be greater than 1 8, but it's not going to be a half. It's not going to be a fourth. It's going to be about like right here. So this would be my 3 and 1 6. Now I'm going to convert 29 twelfths to a mixed number because it'll be easier to plot. So I'm thinking, well, 12 twelfths is one whole, and 12 twelfths plus 12 twelfths would be 24 twelfths, and then that would give me five more twelfths left over. So 24 twelfths would be two holes and five twelfths. Well, six twelfths would be half. So I'm thinking, well, two and five twelfths would come between two and three, and it's not going to be as much as two and a half because that would be two and six twelfths. It's just a little bit less than one half. So I have two and five twelfths. Now I'm going to use this number line to be able to compare these fractions that are greater than one. So I've got 29 twelfths, which remember I converted into the mixed number two and five twelfths. So I'm going to write 29 twelfths right up here above us to remind us that that's what that is. So I've got 29 twelfths compared to two and seven eighths. Well, since this is closer to 2, and 2 and 7 eighths is closer than 3, that tells me that this is less than. Now I'm comparing 29 twelfths to 3 and 1 6. Again, 3 and 1 6 is greater than 3, and 29 twelfths is still 2. So I know that 2 is less than 3. All right, so let's take a look at number 2. We're going to use the same strategy to plot these fractions that are greater than 1 on this number line. So I've got 70 ninths. So the best thing to do here would be to convert this into a mixed number. So I have to think about my multiplication facts here for a minute. And I'm thinking, well, 9 times 6 is 54. 9 times 7 is 63. So I can do 63 ninths, and that's going to leave 7 ninths. Well, because 63 divided by 9 would be 7. That means I would have 9 ninths 7 times. This would be 7 and 7 ninths. Well, I know that's going to come between 7 and 8. So now I'm going to look at 7 ninths. Well, 9 ninths would make a whole. So 7 and 9 ninths would be 8. 
So I've got to go two ninths off of seven. So I know that a ninth is a third of a third, if that makes sense. So if this is a third, then I know that seven and seven ninths is going to be about right here. So greater, closer to eight than it is to seven. And then I have eight and two fourths. Well, I know that eight and two fourths is the same as eight and one half because two is half of four. So it's going to come right between eight and nine. Now I've got 25 thirds. So again, I've got to think about those multiplication facts. Well, three times 10 is 30. So I know it's going to be closer to 10. Three times nine is 27. That's too much. Three times eight is 24. So I can do 24 thirds and that's going to leave one third left over. So since 24 divided by 3 is 8, this would be 8 and 1 third. So if this is 8 and a half, I know that 8 and a third is going to come between 8 and 9, but it's going to be over about 1 third. So it's less than 8 and a half, but it's more than 8. So it's going to be 8 and 1 third. So I'm going to compare 8 and 2 fourths. So remember that's the same thing as 8 and a half. And I'm also going to compare 25 thirds, which remember that's the same thing as 8 and 1 third. So I can write it right above here on the number line because any two fractions that are right on top of each other are equal. 8 and 2 fourths is closer to 9 than 25 thirds. So 8 and 2 fourths is greater than 25 thirds. Now 70 ninths, remember, is the same as 7 and 7 ninths. And I'm comparing that to 8 and a half. Well, because this comes between 7 and 8, and 8 and 2 fourths comes between 8 and 9, I know that this has to be less than. All right, so let's take a look at C. It says explain how you plotted the points in problem 2A. Well, first of all, if you'll notice in A, they're calling this fraction 1. This is an I, but it's actually a 1. So I'm going to say, I'm going to say 4, 1, and 3. I converted the fractions to mixed numbers. Okay, and for seven, seven and seven ninths is closer to 8 than 7 and 8 and 1 third is close closer to 8 than 9. So that's how I plotted those two. 8 and 2 fourths is the same as 8 and a half so it was exactly in the middle. Whoops, this is an E. In the middle of eight and nine. Okay, so for the first two, I converted the fractions to mixed numbers. And 7 and 7 ninths was closer to 8 than it was to 7. 8 and 1 third was closer to 8 than it was to 9. And 8 and 2 fourths is the same as 8 and a half, so it was exactly in the middle of 8 and 9. All right? Compare the fractions given below by writing greater than, less than, or equal to. Give a brief explanation for each answer, referring to the benchmark fractions. Again, a lot of students want to come through and they just want to put greater than, less than, or equal to. Well, you could do that and you might get it right and you still might not understand. That's why I'm expecting you to give a brief explanation for each answer. Now, in the past two videos when we've had this kind of a direction, we've used number lines. And for these, sometimes we'll use number lines, sometimes we won't. Sometimes a number line is easier for me to show than it is to, to write it out in words. So we'll see. All right, so let's take a look. I've got five and one-thirds. And I've got four and three fourths. So first of all, I'm looking here and I've got five and I've got four. So I know if this is five and one third and this is only four and three fourths, I know that this has to be greater. And I can just say that five is greater than four. So it doesn't even really matter about the fractions. If your whole number is five, then 
5 is greater than 4, so it doesn't even matter about the fractions because your whole numbers are larger. Okay, so let's take a look at B. I've got 12 6 and I've got 25 12. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to convert this into, into a mixed number. So I've got 12 6. This would be the same thing as 2 because it would be 6 6 plus 6 6, which is equal to 2 holes. And then for 25 12, I already did this fraction once today, and it was 24 12 and 1 12. So it was equal to 2 and 1 12. Well, 2 is going to be less than 2 and 1 12. Now, because I'm showing my work right here where I converted this into a whole number and I converted this into a mixed number, I'm proving that I do understand. So I'm not going to give a brief explanation or draw a number line for that one. Okay, again, if you just put greater than, less than, or equal to, I would not count it right. All right, so for 18 sevenths, I've got to think about my multiplication facts here for a minute, and I know 7 times 2 is 14. So I can do 14 sevenths, and that's going to leave 4 sevenths. So that means that 18 sevenths is the same as 2 and 4 sevenths. And then for 17 fifths, I know that 5 times 3 is 15, so I've got 5 fifths, and then that's going to leave 2 fifths left over. Well, 15 is 3 fives, so I know that this is going to be 3 and 2 fifths. So 2 and 4 sevenths has to be less than 3 and 2 fifths because 2 is less than 3. Again, because I'm showing my work here, I'm not going to feel the need to show, to give a brief explanation or a number line. All right, for this one, I've got five and two fifths, and I've got five and five eighths. So my whole numbers are the same, and they're already mixed numbers. So what I'm going to do is this time I actually am going to draw a number line. All right, so I'm thinking to myself that both of these numbers come between five and six because they both have the whole number five. So five and two fifths. Well, there's nothing that is exactly half of five. So if you think about that, there's no half of 5. But if you were going to say what's half of 5, well, half of 5 would be 2 and a half, right? So it's kind of like if you wanted to know what the midway point was, if you divided something into 5s, it would be like 2 and a half. So I know that 5 and 2 fifths, like if this is 1 fifth, 2 fifths, 3 fifths, 4 fifths, 5 fifths, here's 2. 2 fifths. It's less than half because this would be the halfway mark right here. Okay? So this would be 5 and 2 fifths. Now half of 8 would be 4. So this would be 5 and 4 eighths. And 5 and 5 eighths would be more than 5 and 4 eighths or 5 and a half. So I know that 5 and 5 eighths would be over here. Therefore, 5 and 2 fifths is less than 5 and 5 eighths because 5 and 2 fifths is less than half and 5 and 5 eighths is greater than half. Okay? Okay, so again, I have the whole numbers are the same and I'm just basically just comparing these two fractions. So to compare these two fractions, I'm going to go ahead and draw my number line here. So both of these numbers are going to come between 6 and 7. Now I'm going to go ahead and divide this into thirds and this would be 6 and two-thirds. This would be six and one-third, six and two-thirds. So now I've got three-sevenths. So this is kind of like the fifth problem that we just did just a minute ago. There's no half of seven. Like if you went right here in the middle of a half, okay, you would have three-sevenths on this side and three sevenths on this side, and then you would have half of a seventh on this side and half of a seventh on this side. So six and three sevenths is going to be less than half. Therefore, six and two thirds is greater than six and three sevenths. Okay, so for F, I'm going to convert this into a mixed number. So again, I've got to think about my multiplication facts, and I know that seven times four is 28 sevenths. So I'm going to go with 28 sevenths, and that's going to leave three more sevenths. So since 28 divided by 7 is 4, this fraction would be 4 and 7 eighths. And then I've got 32 eighths. Oh, hold on, this should be 7, no, this should be, excuse me. 
Okay, so since I have 28 sevenths and 3 sevenths, I know that this would be 4 and 3 sevenths. Now over here I have 8, so I have to again think about my math facts. Well, I know 8 times 4 is 32, so this would be exactly 4. If this is 4 and this is 4 and 3 sevenths, well this has to be greater than because this is 3 sevenths more than 4. Alright, so let's take a look at the last 4 that we have here. So I'm going to go ahead and convert this to a mixed number. So 10 times 3 is 30, so I can take out 30 tenths as a whole number and 1 tenth. So this would be 3 and 1 tenth. And then when I'm thinking about my 8 facts, 8 times 4 is 32, that's too much. 8 times 3 is 24, so I've got 24 eighths. And then I have one eighth left over. So this would be three and one eighth. So now I'm comparing one tenth to one eighth. Well, what do we know about the greater the denominator? If I divide something into ten parts, my parts are going to be smaller than if I divide it into eight parts. Therefore, one tenth is less than one eighth. So three tenths is less than three eighths. All right, so let's take, do H here. So 12 times 3 is 36. So this is going to be my whole number. And then I have 3 twelfths left over. So this is the same as 3 and 3 twelfths. And then 6 times 3 is 18. So that would be 18 sixes. And then I'd have 1 six left over. So this would be the same as 3 and 1 six. So now I'm comparing 3 and 3 twelfths to three and three, excuse me, to three and one six. Well, when I'm looking at these two fractions, I'm thinking, hey, these are related fractions because twelfths and sixes are very close to each other because if you double sixes, then you get twelves. So I could say three and one six is the same as three and two twelfths. So think about that. If I took one six and I multiplied the numerator and the denominator by 2, I would get 2 twelfths, which is an equivalent fraction. So 3 and 1 six is the same thing as 3 and 2 twelfths. So 3 and 3 twelfths has to be greater than 3 and 2 twelfths. All right, so now I've got 49 fiftieths, and I've got 3 and 90 hundredths. Well, I'm, I could convert this into a whole number. Actually, I can't because it's not a whole number, but if I have 49 out of 50, I almost have 1. So I'm going to put almost 1, because if I had 50 fiftieths, that would be 1 whole. And here I have 3 wholes, so I know that this has to be less, because this is not even 1, and this is 3 and 90 hundredths. And because I put right here that this is almost 1, that's my brief explanation to explain what my thinking was here. This proves I wasn't just guessing. All right, now here I've got 5 and 5 twelves and 5 and 51 hundredths. So I think the fastest way to show this would be to draw a number line because both of my whole numbers are the same. So both of these are going to be between 5 and 6. Now, I know that 5 and 6 twelfths is half. So if this is half, I know that 5 and 5 twelfths is less than half. Well, when I look at 51 hundredths, I know 50 hundredths would be half because half of 100 is 50. If this is 51 hundredths, then it has to be more than half. Therefore, 5 and 5 twelfths has to be less than 5 and 51 hundredths because this is less than 5 and a half. This is more than 5 and a half. Not a whole lot more, but a little bit more. So remember today, we were looking at fractions that were greater than 1, and we were comparing them, saying if they were less than, greater than, or equal to, and we were using benchmarked fractions. A lot of today, we use the whole numbers or we use the half mark. So remember to refer to those when you get ready to do your exit slip all by yourself.